Well, welcome back. If you're looking for some space talk, we've definitely got the guys for you. We've got Michael and David from the Lyme Astronomical Society. So thanks for joining us Thank today. You. So you've got some up, an upcoming meeting. Let's talk about that and you know what people can expect if they come to visit. Okay. This Friday, we're having a meeting at the observatory. Mm -hmm. uh, it's our usual monthly meeting at 8 o'clock p.m. And uh, the program probably will start a little bit after that, uh, 8.15 or 8.30, because we've got some business to do beforehand. But uh, this week, we've got Robert Verb. Bob Verb is, uh, the, was the chief engineer for the mirrors on the James Webb Space Telescope. So he's going to tell us all about the, how the mirrors were constructed, the problems they had with it, and it was quite a process. Uh, it's, it's a really neat talk. He's going to talk a little bit about what the James Webb Space Telescope is capable of, how it's different from, from Hubble. Uh, there's a lot to his program, so it's going to be really interesting Friday night. So definitely kind of a unique experience. Not every day that you get to hear from an engineer that worked on this, such a right. big telescope. That's very cool. Yes, that's right. So, um, of course, we've got, you know, the thing that's looming over everybody's minds, the upcoming eclipse. So what are some of the, the things that we're preparing for for that? Well, we have quite a few things at the observatory that we're going to be doing. Uh, the Friends of Lima is going to help us out since we're a smaller club. Uh, they're going to come out and take over the Schoonover Park area. They're going to have a fishing derby, uh, a hog roast, uh, food trucks, entertainment tent, a um, whole bunch of activities going on. And then inside the observatory, of course, we're going to have the telescopes trained on the eclipse. Uh, we're also going to have it live fed down into our 60-inch monitor that we have downstairs. And the Friends of Lima are actually hoping about getting a big outdoor monitor outside to have the eclipse on that too. So even if it turns out and, and it's cloudy that day, we'll still have the thing live broadcast from a clear observatory. So you won't miss it. it will be nice to see it personally. But we're, we're going to have it no matter what. We also have the eclipse glasses. We had them specially made for the Lyme Astronomical Society. They're completely certified. Uh, you don't have to worry about the Chinese knockoffs that might burn your eyes. So if you need glasses, we have them at the observatory. They're $4 a piece or three for 10. Or if you want larger amounts, we can get any amount possible. So at least, you know, you've got that backup plan because I think that's the one thing on people's minds. Like, Mother Nature is very fickle, especially, you know, as we get closer, we'll get a better especially idea. Especially in this area. Oh, if yeah. you look historically, the Lyme area has about a 63% chance of having some type of clouds. But we've been watching the weather the last five or so years with the warming and everything. Mm -hmm. And we've actually had pretty clear skies in that time. So we're hoping. So fingers crossed. <laughs> well, I know that you guys had a really popular event um, this past summer with the Perseid meteor showers. So talk a bit about that because that you said was really exciting to have so many people there. Yes, the, the Perseid meteor shower we do every year on Kendrick Woods usually and this year we had a great event because the moon wasn't a problem and it usually is. So the moon wasn't there. We had a dark clear sky. We had over 120 people help wow. with, out there. Mm -hmm. uh, we had help from the uh, Johnny Appleseed Metropolitan Park District. They had several people there. And the Neil Armstrong Museum had a representative there. So we had a great time looking at different things and seeing some meteors and some fireballs. It was a, a wonderful event. The club has been busy with a lot of different activities this year. We've been kind of overwhelmed with too many activities. So next year, people need to keep an eye on our Facebook page because we're going to change some things around, I think. But, you know, that must feel good knowing that, okay, community is going to come out and, and check this out with all of us, you know. Right. kind of helps you feel like, oh, you know, the, the astronomical scene is alive, and that must, That's you right. know, especially with the younger kids, is that kind of an encouraging thing right. for you guys. That's right. It, it's wonderful to see the crowds come out. And we've had some big crowds on at the observatory for different events, too. This year we had to put up with the smoke from Canada, so okay. it wasn't quite as good. But uh, hopefully next year will be really good, especially with some new things we've got coming up. Okay. So once again, when's that meeting? When can people come and check it out? This Friday night at 8 o'clock is when our public meeting starts. Uh, the program, program probably won't start until 8.15 or 8.30. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for joining mm -hmm. us today. And hopefully people come out and show up and hear all about the James Webb Telescope. So thank, thank you guys you. so much. A new edition returns right after this.